Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is the Toledo, Ohio, USA Museum of Art Poetic Tour. Let's get started. Sanford Robinson Gifford, 1823-1880. The Wilderness, Oil on Canvas, 1860. Ah, the majestic mountain reflected in the still water. What a beautiful sight. The glories of nature reveal Divine Mother's face. All that is good in the world and all that is right. Chilled Hassam, American, 1859 to 1935. Summer Sea, Isle of Shoals, Oil on Canvas, 1902. This beautiful painting depicts a lovely scene on the rocky coast of Maine. The sky is blue, sun shining brightly, and not the slightest chance of rain. Claude Monet, 1840-1926. Antibes, seen from La Salice. Oil on canvas, 1888. Ah, what a wonderful scene in southern France. In the legendary Côte d'Azur. This is a fine place to go for a vacation. That's for sure. Pierre-Auguste Renoir, France, 1841-1919. Road at Wargamont, 1879. Oil on canvas. Ah, what a delightful scene of forests, fields, and coastline in northern France, in the countryside. However, the wind is picking up as a storm moves into the valley. Golly, there's no place to hide. Albert Bierstadt, United States, 1830-1902. El Capitan, Yosemite Valley, California, 1875. Oil on canvas. El Capitan is a massive granite rock formation, 3,000 feet high and a popular sight to see. For rock climbers, it's quite a challenge. Those folks really follow the U.S. Army slogan, Be all that you can be. Jasper Francis Cropsey, United States, 1823-1900. Staruka Viaduct, Pennsylvania, 1865. Oil on canvas. Forests, mountains, and valleys. America's unique, often untouched natural beauty. The railroad, sign of progress. The train's white smoke echoes the clouds above, a peaceful scene of man and nature, existing in harmony. Joseph Mallard William Turner, Great Britain, 1775 to 1851. The Campo Santo, Venice, Italy, 1842, oil on canvas. Ah, Venice, on the left. The famous city, radiant and a bit shabby. On the right, the cemetery island of San Michel, a symbol of the slow demise in the 19th century of the once powerful imperial city. Gilles Le Castre, Flemish, probably Tournai, Allegory of the Unicorn, Wool and Silk Tapestry, 1500-1525. A most famous medieval tapestry, a symbol for the healing power of Jesus Christ, (coughs) the unicorn, an allegory. Paul Cezanne, France, 1839-1906. Avenue at Chantilly, 1888 oil on canvas. Ah, what a beautiful path through the forest. Let's keep going for a while, then we can take a rest. <clears throat> Egyptian, Dynasty 26, coffin of the Lady Tamit, about 600 to 550 B.C. <clears throat> Wood with linen, gesso, and polychrome painted decoration. Ah, ancient Egypt, the pyramids, the Nile River, Northeast Africa, and of course, the largest desert in the world, the mighty and incredible Sahara. 
Ancient Rome, head of Domitian, late 1st century B.C., marble. Ah, here we have the Roman emperor Domitian, the brother of Titus, and the son of Vespasian. Paul Manship, United States, 1885 to 1966, dancer and gazelles, bronze, about 1923. This tableau is a fine scene, this gal and the two antelopes dancing together. Paul Manship was inspired by the paintings of Ragamala. They are the amalgamation of art, poetry, and classical music in medieval India. Edward B. Green, Paris Style, 1933. A row of columns surrounding a space within a building, the Peristyle. For lovers of ancient Greece and Rome, this concert hall really makes them smile. The Cloister Gallery, France, mid-12th to early 15th century, marble. This structure was once part of the Abbey of St. Of Saint Pons, located in the municipality of Nice in the French Riviera. It was damaged by the Turks in 1543 during the siege of Nice. That really was a different era. Leonard L- Limousin, France, 1505 to 1575. Covered taza, detail, interior of bowl, enamel on copper. 1535. Fortune, the unpredictable changes in life, can be overcome by reason, with the assistance of Cupid, the god of affection. <clears throat> Jacques Louis D- David, France, 1748 to 1825. The Oath of Horati, 1786, oil on canvas. In the 7th century B.C., there was conflict in Italy between the cities of Rome and Alba Longa. Instead of going to war to settle the dispute, it was decided that the triplet warriors from Rome, the brothers Horati, would fight their cousins from Alba Longa, the the Curiati. Francesco Primaticcio, Italy. 1504 to 1570. Ulysses and Penelope, oil on canvas, 1560. Odysseus, also known as Ulysses, was away from home for 20 years, as described by Homer in the Iliad and the Odyssey. During his absence, his wife Penelope had many suitors, but she remained faithful and famous for her marital fidelity. William Adolf Bogro, France, 1825 to 1904. The Captive, Oil on Canvas, 1891. They say that angels are all around us, protecting us from danger and helping us do the right thing. When misfortune does come, angels can intercede and reduce the sting. Peter Paul Rubens, Flemish, 1577-1640, The Crowning of St. Catherine, Oil on Canvas, 1631. A princess and a scholar, she lived in the 4th century B.C. in Alexandria, Egypt, North Africa. Her name was St. Catherine. Catherine appeared to Joan of Arc in France in the 1400s, counseled her, and served as an inspiration. Luca Giordano, Italy, 1635 to 1705, the liberation of St. Peter, after 1660, oil on canvas. This is a beautiful scene when St. Peter was rescued from prison by an angel. Our Divine Mother and the angels and saints are so wonderful and can help us all escape from the prison of our own personal hell. Jacobo Bassano, Venice, Italy, 1510 to 1592. The flight into Egypt, 1542, oil on canvas. Moses led the Israelites 
from slavery in Egypt to freedom in, in Israel in the 13th century B.C. Because of the threat posed by King Herod in Israel 1,300 years later, Joseph led his, led his wife Mary and son Jesus back to Egypt seeking safety. Domenicus Theotoc- Theotocopolis, also known as El Greco, Spain, 1541 to 1614, The Agony in the Garden, 1590, Oil on Canvas. The night before his crucifixion, Jesus' prayer, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. He knew that two days after Good Friday, on Easter, there would be life, a beautiful day, and plenty of sun. Giovanni Francesco Barbieri, also known as Guercino, Italy, 1591 to 1666. Lot and his daughters, oil on canvas. God's perfect justice led to the destruction of the evil cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because he was a good man, he and his family were spared. His name was Lot. His wife disobeyed God's command, looked back, and was turned into a pillar of salt. Man, look at that raging inferno. It must have been hot. Jean-Baptiste Le Prince, France, 1734-1781. Fear, oil on canvas, 1769. Something seems to have frightened this gal. She appears to have taken a fright. I wonder what happened. Maybe she heard a bump in the night. Nicholas Poussin, France, 1594-1665. Mars and Venus. In this incredible scene, Mars, the Roman god of war, holds his shield as a mirror for Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. It symbolizes love's power to vanquish war. How inspiring for all of us to live lives of love to achieve world peace. This is what God put us on this earth for. Jacques Blanchard, France, 1600-1638. Allegory of Charity, 1637. Oil on canvas. Faith, hope, and charity. Wonderful virtues long associated with Christianity. Jean, Jean Honoré Fragonard, France, 1732 to 1806, Blind Man's Bluff, Oil on Canvas, 1750, a popular courtship game for 18th century lovers, Blind Man's Bluff. One imagines folks getting fed up with not being able to see and remarking, "All right, that's enough." Judith. Schechter, United States, born in 1961. Nature, stained glass cut, sandblasted, engraved, painted, and assembled with copper foil. Here we have an abundance of nature. Outside through the window, floral wallpaper, and a lush bouquet. The gal lounging on the oversized Victorian chaise is ecstatic. It's, it's all more than okay. Bertha Morissot, France, 1841-1895, in the garden, garden at Moricourt, oil on canvas, 1884. Bertha Morissot was considered one of the three grand dames of Impressionism. Here she depicted her little daughter, Julia. Julia's companion is the daughter of Morissot's sister, Edma. Thomas Gainsborough, Great Britain, 1727 to 1788, the Countess of Sussex and her daughter, oil on canvas, 1771. Ah, a fine portrait of the Lady of the Bedchamber, Hester Yelverton, and her daughter, of the British royal family in Great Britain, the glamorous Windsor family, folks with with which around the folks folks with which around the world appear to be smitten 
Willem van de Velde the Younger, Holland, 1633 to 1707. Ships in a Stormy Sea, Oil on Canvas, 1671. Images of ships at sea became a popular subject in Dutch art in the 17th century. Seafaring for trade with the Far East, fishing and whaling was essential for the creation of Dutch prosperity. Francois Boucher, France, 1703 to 1770. The Mill at Charenton, Oil on Canvas, 1758. In the olden days, they used to grind corn using the power of rushing water from a river. It was all part of the perpetual quest to help folks get their dinner. John George Brown, United States, 1831 to 1913. The Country Gallants, Oil on Canvas, 1876. With the Industrial Revolution, by the mid-1800s, more and more Americans were living in noisy, congested cities and experiencing chaos and strife. Middle-class city dwellers pursued romantic nostalgia and paintings depicting scenes of the lost, simple, idealistic rural life. Peter Bruegel the Younger, Belgium, 1564 to 1637. Winter landscape with a bird trap, oil on wood panel, transferred to Masonite, circa 1600 to 1625. Ah, the 1600s, folks enjoying ice skating in Belgium, beneath a delightful winter sky. And why shouldn't people have a good time? To quote the Bible, let us eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Eastman Johnson, the United States, 1824-1906, corn shelling, oil on Academy Board, 1864. Some folks enjoy corn on the cob. For other corn uses, such as cornbread or feeding, or feeding livestock, the corn's kernels must be removed. And this is no easy job. Louis Leopold Boily, France, 1761 to 1845. S'il vous plaît, oil on wood panel, circa 1790. Ah, what a heartwarming tableau. S'il vous plaît, French for if you please. Right, très bon, very good. And while we're at it, have a good day. John Singer Sargent, United States, Princess Demidoff, Oil on Canvas, 1895. Ah, the famous beauty and fashion leader, Sophie Ilarinovna, part of the Russian nobility. In 1895, their days were numbered. By 1917, they would be eliminated by the Russian Revolution, replaced by the communist elite, and only be important in history. Rembrandt van Ryggen, Holland, 1606-1669. Young man with plumed hat, oil on wood panel, 1631. This young man appears to, to be immersed in deep thought. Life does have its battles which need to be fought. Child Hassam, United States, 1859-1935. Rainy Day in Boston, Oil on Canvas, 1885. Ah, here we have the wide avenues and new brick houses in Boston's fashionable South End. At the intersection of Columbus Avenue and Appleton Street, the paved asphalt is very pretty, wet and shining. A nice place to meet a friend. Edward Hopper, 1882 to 1967. Two on the aisle. Oil on canvas, 1927. There's nothing like arriving early at the theater for a fine performance. Perhaps an enjoyable opera with plenty of dance, drama, and romance. Marisol Escobar, United States. Born in France, 1930-2016. The Party, 1965. 
assemblage, assemblage of 15 freestanding life-sized figures and three wall panels with painted wood and carved wood, mirrors, plastic, television set, clothes, shoes, glasses, and other accessories. These ladies are wearing colorful clothing, reminding one of colors which could be seen outside in nature on a day with a strong sun. However, the, the party ap appears to be a bit dull. I wonder if anyone is having any fun. Ravinder Reddy, India, born 1956, untitled, head gold, 2003, fiberglass, resin, and gold gilt. Indian artist Ravidar Reddy fuses contemporary pop culture and Hindu sculptural tradition. Here we see the union of the ideal goddess and an individual woman. Seated Sakyamuni, Buddha, carved gray schist, India, Gand Gandharar, 3rd century. After all of our experiences in many lifetimes, we are all finally led to the wonderful path of yoga meditation. Like Lord Buddha, we can succeed in this greatest of all endeavors, end our suffering forever, achieve ecstatic bliss, union, union with God, and final soul liberation. Well, that concludes today's presentation. You might consider uh, visiting the Toledo Museum of Art, which is which is about an hour and 50 minute drive from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. And you also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History, which you can listen to in Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, and Radio Public. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time.